I know I promised you a glorious GNOME 338 video, but hey, since when I'm keeping my promises? Should I remind you the Silver Blue series? So even if I've worked more than 5 hours on that video, I'm dropping it for now, because there are some huge merge requests that haven't landed in Master yet, and I don't want to miss them. But in the meantime you can read Shell Development Blog, that covers some of the things that are already inside 337.3 release. I say some because there is lots going on on Shell and Mutter development, that is practically impossible for someone to cover on a blog post. So, the first post is talking about the split up of the frame clock. To give you the short version, Shell and by Shell I also include Mutter, dropped Clutter Master Clock and introduced Clutter Frame Clock instead. What's really new is that Clutter Stage View that handles each monitor, it now also includes its own frame clock, so it can paint the stage at different frame buffers according to each monitor frequency and also rotation. I'm not using myself a multi-monitor setup so I'm not aware of the problems, but basically that should fix the paint updates issues between two different monitors. Very important to mention this change will only affect Wayland's session. Speaking of which, on my MPV vs GNOME video I obviously meant that Wayland has issues under GNOME, rather Wayland alone is the issue. Wayland is a solution, but keep in mind that Mutter wasn't originally written as a Wayland compositor, and that's why all these issues today. And the same applies for K1 and Plasma. But anyway, this change is mostly interesting for people who use multi-monitor setups, but most of the fun comes on the second post. First of, we have the customizable app grid that hasn't landed on master, and it is one of the reasons I skipped the glorious video. Also, I'm very worried that this change may not finally come in 338 release, and the current implementation that is tagged as final, may or may not bring some complaints. But I may cover this on different video. Now in the by other changes section, we mean Shell had a huge code refactory, plus lots of the layout logic has been rewritten. And here we see lots of links that is impossible to explain each one on a single post, and they aren't really like tiny merge requests. In fact, it is not even all the big merge requests listed. Shell and Mutter for the last year are constantly running with like 100 merge requests, and while I'm against calling names, it is really Florian that makes an incredible job reviewing pretty much everything. And that aside the code he writes. And we continue with Mutter that on the first paragraph it describes some performance changes, and we talk about major performance improvements. Like the merge request that turns meta-shaped texture into a clutter content object, and reduces the number of window actors by 33% at the very least. And then we have again another changes section, which is simply too much to cover so let's add some links instead, and it is pretty much again a big code refactoring and mutter. And anyway, you should read all those yourselves, so I'm here to show you what happens in action. But before! There is also this merge request, that is actually a series and it is not described on that post. What does this to apply clutter effects to clutter paint nodes, and maybe I'm gonna say something very stupid, but I think we may get some proper blur in the short future. So let's go to some actual video and what I posted two days ago on community page. So I'm in GNOME Master and actually 337.3 .3 release, and there is this magical improvement on animations, that are much better than Windows and kinda feel like Mac OS levels. It's kinda lame because you can't see it on the video, but trust me, the magic is here! And it isn't just the performance improvements, but it is also the very proper animation timings that give this awesome feeling. On the bad side, the menus and all widgets graphics remain politely unacceptable for year 2020. And to be honest? Shell Toolkit may got better performance, but the API is quite primitive so it can't do much, and certainly you can't develop UIs as fast as you can do with Qt for example. So don't really expect deep in level kind of graphics. 